Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're going out with the Muskie Mavericks. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. This show is all about muskies. And you talk to any big muskie fisherman, especially seasoned hunters, they'll tell you this week, 4th of July week is prime time, especially if you have a warm front coming in your area, go out there and get a giant. Right on, Troy. Right now is the time to be on the water if you want to catch a big fish. You know, the quality of muskie fishing has greatly improved throughout our region over the past couple decades. More and bigger fish are being caught primarily due to successful stocking. Here in Minnesota, growth in muskie fishing surpasses just about every other species, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's dive in a little bit deeper. These are a different breed. These are muskie mavericks. Muskies, apex predators that patrol waters like nuclear subs. Big toothy critters capable of casting a spell over anglers like nothing else in freshwater. Yes, musky anglers are a different breed. The words fanatic and nut are often used to describe these soldiers of fortune who push harder, longer, and farther in pursuit of a new personal best. Insanity can be described as doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. By that definition, musky anglers are insane. Just consider the endless casts and figure eights it takes to break the routine of fishless presentations. Hours, weeks, and months of fighting in the rain, wind, snow, darkness, and extreme temperatures, fueled on little more than protein bars and caffeine. But like the big buck hunter, there's knowing that in a split second, all the preparation can pay off. In a sport where sleep, jobs, relationships are easily supplanted by big fish desire, there is a fine line between just fishing and obsession. But the fish of 10,000 casts has gotten easier to catch. Big fish, too. Musky stocking and management efforts have created more great waters across the country. And fish, on average, are growing longer than yesteryear. The catch, photo, and release movement has taken hold. And as a result, many waters are thriving with unprecedented numbers of giant fish. Musky anglers, too, are also more knowledgeable, prepared, and technically savvy than ever before. For example, we've learned a lot about muskie movement over the past decade that shatters preconceived ideas. This kind of knowledge combined with today's electronics, better line, rods and reels, and radical new bait designs means muskie anglers are fishing with a much greater level of efficiency. The result? Have a look on social media and you'll see what's happening. There's a growing army of muskie mavericks who are catching more and bigger muskies across the country. From Lake of the Woods to Vermilion, to Winnie, Leech, and Mille Lacs, from Green Bay to the St. Lawrence, and all points in between. Musky fishing has never been better. Of course, with so many big fish being caught, experts agree it's only a matter of time before somebody sinks metal into the next world record. And when that happens, and it will, Angling Buzz will get you the inside scoop. Musky fishermen truly are a different breed. They eat, sleep, and breathe musky fishing. Well, maybe not too much sleep. And I would bet to say that the next world record is gonna come from the Angling Buzz region. Definitely, Troy. You see these guys sleeping in the back of their truck at the landing. They go on multi-day benders of chasing big fish. Once you catch one, it's over. I'm putting my money on Green Bay. Here's the thing, to catch trophy class fish, you need to first understand the nature of this apex predator. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. We just got done with a super cool experience with Doug Schultz, area fisheries supervisor in Walker, doing musky spawn take. It's a really cool process, so walk us through it, Doug. We've been at this for about a week now, and, and what we do is we go into Miller's Bay, uh, set trap nets. Uh, fish will come in during the night looking for warm water, run into those trap nets, and then uh, we check them the next day and pull the fish out. Uh, and we separate the males and the females, uh, find the females that are ready to go, and uh, take eggs from her, and, and we'll try to pair her to at least two different males. You know, we mix the milk and the eggs together, uh, fertilize, uh, actually stir them with a turkey feather, believe it or not, 
uh, because it's soft and those eggs are real sensitive to being damaged. And then they have to sit in water hardened for a couple hours until we can actually transport them safely to the hatchery. Uh, the eggs coming from here off of Leach today are destined for our hatchery in Park Rapids. And uh, they're going to sit there for another two, three weeks until they hatch out. And uh, at that time we'll stock them into our, our rearing ponds. And uh, in the fall we'll harvest those rearing ponds. And those fish then get distributed to uh, a lot of our broodstock lakes sure. around the state, which we use for our annual uh, muskie egg take needs. So we're only in leech once every, every uh, four years right now. And the purpose of that is just to get fresh genetics to put in those broodstock lakes that we actually use on an annual basis. So sure. by, by coming here to the source every four years and, and getting a fresh uh, slug of genetics in the system, we keep those uh, just as healthy as, as we are this one. Well, I can tell you from first-hand experience that the program is working because there's awesome opportunities for muskies across the state of Minnesota. They're spectacular fish. If you fished them here in my home state of Minnesota, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you need to come enjoy this awesome resource that these guys are doing an awesome job of making accessible for a lot of people. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack. Cargo trunk. Bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. Fishing game boards and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now we're going to take a look at four top trophy muskie destinations. You know, Troy, what's interesting, two of these waters 30 years ago didn't even have fishable muskie populations. Yeah, that's, that's crazy to think, especially the big fish that they're catching right now. So let's get right to it. Here's four top trophy muskie destinations. Northwest Ontario's sunset country offers anglers lakes with large populations of naturally producing muskies, some real giants too. The current Ontario record stands at a whopping 65 pounds and anglers report lots of 50 inch plus fish each year. There's a muskie fishing lodge for every budget, as well as different types of water to fish. Big and small, from gin clear to tea stained, each with a variety of structure to fish your favorite baits. The Ontario muskie season runs from mid-June to the end of November, and there's really no bad time to fish here. Each cast is another shot at a fish of a lifetime. Some are calling Lake Vermilion Minnesota's new untapped muskie fishing resource. But the truth is, the 40,000 acre lake has been kicking out numbers and trophy fish for some time. But no matter how you look at it, Vermilion is one of Minnesota's fisheries management success stories. Recent DNR testing reveals approximately 15% of the muskie population surpassing 50 inches, including a 57 and a half incher caught during the PMTT tournament in August of 2015 and a massive 60 incher caught in 2010. In fact, some believe the next state catch and release record could come from Vermilion. This much is certain, with rock, weeds, points, steep banks, and 365 islands to fish, 
there's plenty of room for record breakers to hide. Speaking of records, many muskie experts believe the next world record will be caught on Wisconsin's Green Bay, waters with a high concentration of Great Lakes spotted strain muskies in the 40 to 50 pound class. With so much water to cover, trolling's the name of the game. But the bay's numerous reefs are perfect for casting too. Although fish are caught on Green Bay all season, August through fall is prime time for the fish of a lifetime. And there are plenty of expert guides in the area willing to help you do just that. Part of a larger system that also includes the St. Clair and the Detroit River, Lake St. Clair may have more muskies per square mile than anywhere else in the world. This much is certain, St. Clair has all the right ingredients for growing lots of big toothy critters. 420 square miles of big water, an average depth of only 10 feet with excellent water clarity. Although you can catch them casting, multiple fish days are routine for anglers trolling big baits on multiple rods and planer boards. In fact, many St. Clair guides offer big boat charter style trips that can accommodate larger angler groups. A great opportunity to mark a trophy muskie off your bucket list. Yeah, those places are truly awesome. I know my experience on Lake St. Clair fishing big bass tournaments. I could not help but have a musky rod on deck before the tournament during practice, and I did hook into a couple. I can't help it. They're such an exciting fish to catch. Sounds like you've got the curse and there is no cure. I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> hey, for me, when it comes to musky fishing, I love Northwest Ontario. I go back every chance I get. There's some really big fish. Man, I dream about it at night. Yeah, it's also a fish that can give you nightmares. Right now, here's the first of our buzz bite reports from around the region. Happy 4th of July from everybody at Sportfish Michigan. We've got a really nice report for you throughout the state of Michigan. For anglers targeting lake trout, vertical jigging and trolling remain the top two options. Vertical jigging in the 50 to 70 foot range and trolling in the 70 to 90 foot range as the thermal climb really develops seem to be the tickets to getting the most bites. The mayfly hatch is upon us here in the state of Michigan and down in Lake St. Clair, they've had the bulk of their hatch already, but up in Northern Michigan, we still have the peak to come on many of the waters. Early July is the perfect time for a top water bait, whether it's a dry fly imitating the mayfly hex hatch or whether it's a walking bait or a popper for bass fishermen or even a soft plastic jerk bait like a fluke twitched just below the surface. Explosive bites, lots of fun. It always seems like there's two things in common with Ben's reports, big fish and lots of them. Our next report, we're joining the Leisure Outdoors crew on Leech Lake. Right now, still a lot of bug hatches going on, especially on the main lake. And uh, with that comes, as an angler, you have to be incredibly diverse and you have to be willing to try different things and have multiple presentations ready in your boat. So what's working on Leech Lake right now? Fish are off in 18 to 20 feet of water on most days when it's fairly calm, which we haven't had too many of those. If not, on those windy days, move up into 12 to 16 feet of water. The edges of the reefs or anywhere where you can find mud transitions is gonna be key because that's where those bug hatches are taking place. So what's working? Uh, right now, number one presentation is a slow death uh, on a bottom bouncer or a slow death with a smile blade. Uh, with a crawler, a piece of crawler. Covering ground is the name of the game. If you find those fish and you don't catch them on a spinner or a slow death, slow down, use Lindy rig. A jig and a crawler is also another good presentation to use when the bugs are hatching. Uh, if you don't want to fish those areas, Walker Bay, shoreline breaks, 18 to 25 feet of water, Lindy rigs and chubs, Lindy rigs and leeches or crawlers, or get up in the cabbage weed, slip bobbers and leeches, or pitching a jig and a leech in the cabbage can also be a great presentation this time of year. So get up here, give it a try. There's still a lot of, big, a lot of good fishing to be had, uh, and give us a shout if you want to get out. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. 
If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Our Buzz Bite reports continue now with Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. We're into our summer transition time up here. The walleyes and the bass, they've transitioned. They're out on your humps, on your reefs. You have fish on the weed lines, out on that deeper structure, uh, jigging wraps, pulling lead core with cranks. We'll put fish in the boat. Uh, the smallmouth bass in those areas, drop shotting, fishing plastics like wacky style with a weight on one end. We'll get you down and get some smallmouth. The muskies, they've transitioned too. We have some open water fish. We have some fish out on those reefs and those humps, your points, your deeper weed lines. If you've never been on Vermilion before, just look for your green and red channel markers. Look for your white markers out on those reefs and rock piles, and you'll find muskies in most of those areas and uh, smallmouth, walleye, and some of those same areas also. Have a great week and travel safe. Our next report, we're heading over to the Alexandria region with Ben Hiddle. The walleyes moved into a lot of the basin areas in the major parts of the lakes. Uh, a lot of the walleyes are chasing now the fresh perch hatchlings and even uh, some of the bluegills and the crappies that are starting to emerge along the weed lines. And with that said, the perch have been okay sized. The bigger ones, the females have moved out now. The perch are even in that 9, 10 inch range. And then your panfish, your sunfish and crappies are along that weed edge too where you're catching walleyes. So it's always a good idea to bring panfish gear too. Uh, them crappies are anywhere from that 9, 10, 11, 12 inch fish. Them bluegills being them 8, 9, even a couple 10 inches being caught. And the walleyes are there too. Uh, it's more so a morning early morning and an early evening bite, uh, them low light hours with our clear water. So keep that in mind and always keep your bait fresh. And now we're going from great walleye fishing to cat fishing with Brad Durek up on the Red River. Well, the spawn continues up here on the Red River. Fishing is tough for the most part, although there are still many big fish to be caught. Uh, Mother Nature is not playing into our favor with putting heavy cold fronts and unstable weather every week on us. But there are, like I said, there are still fish to be caught. Some of the things we're doing to find success is we're using our hummingbird side imaging, looking alongside wood piles, along brake lines, trying to stay a little bit out of the current to where the spawning fish still are. But as far as bait goes, it really doesn't matter. The most important part of finding fish is location, location, location. So continue to use your electronics, be patient, longer sits, and just keep the bait fresh, keep working, keep your patience. Contrary to popular belief recently, there still are many big fish in the system. It's just a little bit t more challenging time right now. So until next time, I'm Brad Durek up on the Red River. Catfishing is a lot of fun, especially when they're that size. Our next report, we're heading over to Wisconsin with Troy Peterson. Guys, the walleye bite is really heating up. Still a lot of nice fish coming down in the lower bay. Uh, guys are casting crankbaits, casting plastics uh, up on the reefs when we got some good wind. Uh, still a lot of trolling going on. Starting to find some fish in the weeds over on the west shore. Uh, so a lot of great tactics. Uh, we're also starting to get some nice fish now out over the mud flats. Uh, the one thing about Wisconsin is we can use three lines per angler. So if we've got two or three guys in the boat, we can run six to nine lines. And uh, we're putting out our offshores here, uh, getting as many lines as we can out, uh, putting out a bunch of different crankbaits. Some of the purples have been working really well. Uh, varying our depth, varying our color, varying our type of crankbait until we can really effectively key in on these fish. 
And once we figure out what's working, replicate it, and we're putting a lot of nice fish in the boat. A uh, lot of great fishing still to come all summer long. Uh, these fish, like I say, are just getting in, into their summer pattern. So get out, uh, get up on the bay, enjoy what the bay has to offer, and uh, we'll see you guys on the water. And for our final report, we're heading from Wisconsin over to central Minnesota on Lake Mille Lacs with Al Linder. Hey, how's that for a walleye? Let me put her back in the water. Good fish, man. Hey, here in Buzz country, the walleye bite is as good as it could be all year long now on all of the lakes. This is what we refer to often as a peak bite. Walleye fishing is hotter than a pistol now. And uh, the unique thing about what's happening on most of the lakes in Buzz Country, the fish are biting on a wide variety of different things. It could be on crawlers, leeches, minnows. It could change throughout the day. You could be rigging, you could be jigging, you could be pulling spinners, uh, you could be corking, you could be pulling plugs. All depends on the kind of body of water you're in. Some fish will be shallow, some fish could be deep, some fish are in between. It's one of those magic walleye times. I'm out on Malak, which is four, four, uh, 14 miles from our office. So if I want to get on the water for two to three hours, I just zip over and a walleye bite is as good as I've ever seen it here, ever. And the beauty of it, you can catch them any way you want to catch them. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Now it's time for a cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. We're talking muskies today. We're gonna to start over here with some blade baits. Safety pin spinner bait styles like this are great for covering, you know, through weeds and over rocks. Inline spinners, smaller profiles are good for, you know, if you're fishing really fast, trying to cover water. Musky Mayhem, the double cowgirl, over the past few years, this bait has really taken off and for good reason, it's catching really big fish. And here's something, this is pretty interesting. This is the suicide duck from Savage Gear. This actually won Best of Show at ICAST 2016. If you see the action on this, it actually looks like a little duck like scurrying across the surface. The action, the sound is really good. Check this out from Savage Gear. This is really matching the hatch. And soft plastics are also really important when you're musky fishing. Uh, the Swimming Dog for musky innovations. Big five out hooks on this. Great profile. Good action in the tail. Very durable plastic. As well as musky innovations Bulldog series. You have smaller single tail designs as well as the bigger Magnum like this. Two big tails. Big profile. Catches big fish. And also trolling is extremely important. Uh, for musky fishing, you know, you can get your lines out, you can run multiple baits, so having different profile, different sizes is very important. You know, as big as like this 10 inch jake, down through these bagleys, down to a rapala super shad. You can cast these, but these work great for trolling. And having a good planer board is very important as well. Offshore, well, offshore makes some of the best. This is the SST 
Pro Mag Planer from Offshore Tackle, especially if you're running, you're, you're in a state or an area that you can run multiple lines. This is an absolute great option to spread out your baits nice and far and then holds up, runs really good in rough water, which is usually good musky fishing weather. <laughs> If you're new to musky fishing or you know someone that is and they're not comfortable using a big profile reel, well this is the St. Croix Premier Line. This is an 8 foot rod. You might look at this and think this is a bait caster. It's actually a big spinning rod. So it's a big spinning rod. You put a bigger profile spinning reel like a size 40, something like that underneath. Have your braid on this and this is a great way to introduce people into musky fishing that don't feel comfortable with a big profile bait caster from St. Croix. And having good line is very important. Suffolk has their performance braid series. Tough line has their dominate series. You know, 50 to 80 pound braid. That'll hold up for throwing these different baits. Make sure you have a couple different sizes as well. And a great life jacket that you can use from Onyx. This is the AM24. This is very lightweight. Automatically inflates if it's submerged in water. Nice thing about it is it's, you can see that you just throw it over your shoulder. It allows for a lot of big shoulder movement, especially if you're casting throughout the day. You won't notice that it's on there. This is the AM24 from Onyx. All of these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm store, as well as online at fleetfarm.com. Now it's time for a technique of the week. We're figure eighting for big muskies. Hey, so here's some of the fundamentals of a figure eight that'll help you with boat side hookups this season. And we're gonna demonstrate this with the inline spinner, probably the most productive musky lure of all time. At the tail end of your retrieve, say three to four inches above your leader, make a hard left corner or an L turn keeping the bait moving at a steady pace. You'll make nice sweeping round corners, then cross back through the middle, then outside and back through the middle, basically drawing a figure eight. If you have a fish that comes in hot, don't stop the figure eight. Continue for a few minutes. Sometimes they'll drop off or hide under the boat, just waiting for the right time to ambush. You'll want to disengage your reel with the thumb bar during the figure eight. If the fish strikes, you can free spool the fish so you don't rip the hooks out. It's important to remember that each lure will act a little bit differently on a figure eight, but that's a subject for another show. Just remember to figure eight after every cast, because I promise it'll end up putting more fish in your boat over the course of a season. You know, understanding and mastering that figure eight is so vital when you're musky fishing. When they hit at the side of the boat is some of the most explosive action in freshwater. Definitely, Troy. That's some adrenaline surging stuff. It's like hand to hand combat in fresh water. On next week's show, we're going to cover how to discover your next fishing hotspot. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Please join us next week. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you leave any lake. Remember, clean drain and dry. Be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. All of our current guide reports are there, articles, videos to help you catch fish right now. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you next week. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Ray Brostock. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Good luck everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.